Hello, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program. My name is Hillstash, and I bring you the next generation of Kerbal engineering feats. Actually closely, fairly, potentially closely paralleling what's going on in the real world. We have more reusable uh, parts here. We have hopefully the outer, outer ones will uh, parachute back on their own, kind of land in the water, and be retrievable by some other group of contractors that we'll pretend we're hiring. And uh, this stage here, I believe, will make it to orbit. So I could be wrong about that, though. And uh, anyway, it's it's got a probe controller. So it's going to not only parachute, but potentially uh, land as well, that possible um, under rocket power, which is interestingly enough, incredibly close to what SpaceX is going to be doing by, uh, I think it's in the late September, they've got a their third resupply mission for the ISS planned, and they are going to attempt to uh, return their, their main Dragon, uh, or their main Falcon 9 stage. Um, not return it really, but they're going to essentially try to hover it over the ocean <laughs> and, and then have it, let it kind of fall into the ocean. But they're going to do two burns. They're going to do a uh, slow it down on re-entry burn, and then they're going to do another burn just before touchdown, uh, hopefully in the right attitude to to uh, to hover it over the water. So that's pretty exciting. That's also, I believe, the first Falcon uh, 9D uh, model that's going up with the new Merlin engines and uh, new uh, structure of them. They're not going to be in the 3x3 three three pattern anymore. They're going to be kind of in a more circular pattern, which helps with loading. Uh, if you imagine uh, having all your engines around the, I guess there's one in the middle, so there'd be eight around on the edges and one in the middle. The edges are a really strong part of the ship, where you're, if you're pushing up directly on the edges, it's very structurally sound, whereas if you're pushing up the other, the, the three by three part, they're all over the place, those engines. There's only maybe the, the four on the outside that are actually pushing on the outside. So uh, they are able to lighten things, and, and, uh, and that's a good thing in space stuff. Anyway, uh, let's continue on with my rocket. Um, we'll talk more about the SpaceX stuff as it gets closer. This stage should be the, I'm hoping maybe, transmooner stage. Uh, and then hopefully with enough to get it back home. Uh, we've got some RCS. We've got you know, a good amount of fuel here. We don't have a large payload up here. And this thing's got its own. I should really move that. Eh, oh, whatever. It's ugly. Uh, this thing's got its own. Uh, descent stage because we're going hopefully to the moon and we have a little rover and yeah oh, I need to put this in an action group custom one toggle I guess I didn't really need to I could have just done that by hand but uh, so we have a cute little rover lots of battery power it's got uh, solar power got a couple of scientific instruments on it and that's about it so not a lot to it but the, the main point of this almost isn't even the moon. It's to see how all the other reusable parts fare. Um, I'm not doing it quite Scott Manley style. I'm doing it because uh, these, these will fall back and, and disappear on their own. Uh, I'm not going to follow them back in because I need to be flying this stage. Um, so let's save this and head to the launch pad. It took me a bit to get the top part balanced. Uh, as you can see, there's some <laughs> pieces over there from crashes. Um, yeah, it turns out the uh, top bit here isn't very balanced, so you can see this engine's offset and it's backwards a bit, and it's still not even that balanced, so there's going to be some interesting flying once I land on the moon. But anyway, here we go, hopefully. Uh, our our uh, mini rover or probe, or mini rover or spacecraft, hopefully being more reusable. Oh, I've got some something wrong here. These need to go up here. Yeah, yeah. They don't want these to go off. <laughs> so I check these because then that'd be very bad. Okay. And then this should be flyable still, and this will have to. Okay. And then there. These four engines, and then eject. Okay. Good. Everything should be good there. And I'll uh, probably fast forward till these are ready to drop off, and then I'll bring it back to real time. So in three, two.
Okay, so let's see how this goes. Parachutes are out. I think that was pretty successful. Need to start pitching over more. That might have been a little aggressive. <laughs> oh well. And those are really going to probably fall back right around there. They might not even end up in the water, so pretty cool. I wish I could have followed them and, uh, and watched them back. They're gone now, unfortunately. Although it looks like there's something there. Are they actually gone? Oh, there's that debris. I'm going to have to do something with that debris. <laughs> Go over and end that. Okay, so... I was thinking... I was thinking this would be orbital, this part here, but I'm thinking not now. And now I'm worried about the whole mission. <laughs> so... This is not really coming up like I thought it would be. I guess the top stage is a little bit uh, heavier than the the previous rocket because I've got two kind of extra stage like two stages here instead of just one to get that satellite up. Hmm. Yeah, the apoapsis isn't coming up very fast. This isn't going up very fast. Halfway on fuel and rapidly dwindling. Well, one interesting thing is this is not a recoverable stage really here on Kerbin. Uh, I guess it can come back in, I think. Because, yeah, this is a... Uh, looking at the total delta V here, I think... Apoapse is now 52. So I guess we're... Slowly. Oh, we're in space now, anyway. Might as well just burn this whole stage. And then I will be able to get back to it before it goes in. Maybe, maybe, maybe. We shall see. <laughs> Gotta get this thing orbital. <laughs> Do I have the Delta V? Possibly. Perfect. So yeah, I've got my so it's the apoapsis isn't increasing. Although that might actually give me more time. That might might have been a good thing. Oh no, I think we're gonna I think we might be okay here. It's hard to say still. Let's go back up to zero. In fact, probably more like five. <laughs> Buy a little time to lap laps here because I gotta get up to 22, 2300 meters a second. This thing has hit its apple apps now and it's headed back down. I need to get to it before. I need to get oh, 13 seconds. Oh no. Boy, that counts down fast. <laughs> Oh well, I think we're gonna make orbit anyway, and I think I can get to this thing before it drops back. And let's see, for fuel, doing pretty well. Could we make it orbital? I think so. Yep, yeah, we're already over 2,000 meters a second now. Apoapsis is keeping up with us. Periaps is just under the surface. Hi, Elu. Oh, I have to do a State of the Elu uh, video, too, at some point. Uh, 
That's Elu getting fed. Okay, good enough. Not a very good orbit, but uh, good enough. Uh, where is the moon? The moon is over here. So we've got some time. Okay, oh yeah, I gotta switch back to the other vehicle. I can't switch to it from here. Arrgh. Which one's which? Suborbital trajectory. Yes, this is you. Fly! Okay. We got chutes, we got the engine. Oh yeah, we ran out of fuel. Oh, I didn't mean to run it out of fuel, I guess. Ah. Oh, we get re-entry effects too. Nice. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Literally? Shoot? <laughs> Need to get this. We'll shoot out. Deploy. There we go. <laughs> and where are we coming down? If it's over water, it is. I think it should splash. Hopefully, splash down uh, safe enough. So it's not even really, honestly, that far away from the space center, but. This is pretty good. Yeah, one of these, one should have been a drogue shoot, and one should have been a, I don't know, the drogue shoots are the uh, top mount, not side mount. So these are the only options, I guess, for for this stage. So we'll go take it down to 500 meters, and these should have come out. Here we go there. Oh yeah, six meters a second. I think that's okay for these engines. I think these engines will survive that. So I guess that, that worked out that I ran them all the way out. I didn't need any engine power. And nice. Oops. <laughs> Uh, we'll just pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> um, yes. There's not debris there in the ocean. That's Oh, there doesn't actually seem to be debris, so that's good. Okay. Say pro grade. Uh-oh. I know what I didn't think of. Power. But there is <laughs> solar panels. Oh, crap. This thing's not going to be able to return. Power! Ah. Hmm. I think I have a solution. Not a solution, per se, but we shall see. Thinking about, thinking about things here. Where's the moon? Is that the moon? That is the moon. Okay. We are getting some power from <laughs> the sun. Not much as it turns away. Give it a little, maybe, yeah, get a little bit there when it reaches around again. And. There we are, and now when we get a moon rise, I will fire off for the moon, and then I will meet you when we get our intercept and uh, get a little closer. Okay, we are back and at the moon. 
So, what is my plan? <laughs> well, I'm going to do kind of what Apollo did and crash this stage into the moon, is, is my thought. So, we'll just use kind of the, hopefully the last bit of fuel. Oh yeah, maybe it won't work if I don't have enough fuel. <laughs> oh, crap. Let's watch the periaps. It should... Yeah, what I want it to do is, yeah, oh, oh, crap. Oh no, there we go. Excellent. This is going to work. Now, the other thing is, is that, um, does that mean I'm going to... No, I'm going to come down on the light side, so that's good, because I'm going to need potentially this for power. Okay. No, I think this is going to work out okay. I need to watch... Uh watch various things like altitude but uh, I think this is going to this is going to work whether I can keep this upper stage balanced uh, when I go to land it is another open question okay okay now we're going to need some surface information Really orbital information. Ten kilometers. So we'll just hopefully burn off the rest of this fuel, slowing down here. And this, uh, see what kind of a uh, delta V this upper stage has. I think it was fairly high, so I think actually these two might be included in this delta V here. So it's going to be plenty enough. Still have a little bit left. <laughs> That's okay. Kills, that killed off a lot of the velocity. We'll just burn this off slow. Slowing down. Let's extend the communicatron no problemo phone. There we go. Now, this is the scary part. Will this be able to... <laughs> Let's try to uh, just stick here. Kill off uh, the horizontal velocity. So there's the horizontal velocity done. Now I can, hmm, off. You know what I didn't do is add a uh, an SAS on here. No, I did. I have an SAS, but not an ASAS. So, hmm. This, I think this will still work. Oh, that's still there. I thought it, oh, because it's controllable still. Yeah, I guess, yeah. That's going to die. <laughs> There it goes. Okay, now I gotta concentrate on myself here. I got two and a half kilometers to attempt to get this thing down vertically. See, it's not so balanced. I'm gonna have to control it. Watch the horizontal speed. <laughs> it's gonna be tough. Uh, down around a meter a second though is pretty good. Whoops. And I was watching horizontal, not vertical. Still horizontal speed, half a meter a second. Good. Now where's the sun? Okay, we're going to get the shadow pretty much right underneath.
There's the shadow. I'm just going to concentrate a little bit on landing this thing. There we go. I think that's even still attached, maybe? Yes. Let's say yes. And now. Now. Now is the hard part. Could we just tilt this whole thing over? No. <laughs> uh, could we tell it to flip over this way? It's trying to roll it over, no. Uh, I guess I could have tried to tilt it. I still can, I guess, try to tilt it. That exact wasn't exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, uh oh. Okay, no, that's no problem. I think we just need to roll it. <laughs> Come on, over, over. So close. Okay, um, don't want to get going too fast, but now can we roll over now? <laughs> no. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Land upright, please. It's close. There we go. <laughs> there we are. And we're a hundred percent intact. That was the most graceful landing I've ever done. I'm sure you can tell. And we have a probe on the moon. <laughs> so yeah, if you go in, I think if you go into docking mode, it uh, handles driving better. All right, where can we go? You can see the no debris on the moon either. <laughs> Bonus. So if we head east, we'd eventually hit there. And we are heading east. And yeah, at uh, however many meters a second this thing can go, it's going to take us a while to get anywhere. And there's, of course, a good possibility that this will just go off a jump and flip. Though maybe not as much as the other rovers. They go a lot faster than this one. Let's see what happens. Some sort of small ridge coming up here. Didn't seem to do much. Oh, let's turn on these. Minus 19. 1.61 meters per second squared. Oh, there's a bit of a jump. And 8 meters a second or so, it looks like. It's going to be our top speed, so... It's faster than a Kerbal, anyway. Oh, oh, oh. Something happened when I switched away and it tilted there. <laughs> That's not good. So, okay, let's not do that. 
I was just trying to see approximately where I was, but I'm guessing the, the answer is nowhere in particular. <laughs> Elu's attacking the screen. Okay, oh there's a there's a bit of a ridge. Let's see what happens. I can't see what happens because Elu's in front of the screen. Oh, a little bit of a bump. I saw that. Okay, so I'm gonna call the episode there. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Hillstash, and we leave you roving across the moon. <laughs>